Hi guys, welcome to Learning Electronics Repair and another video sponsored by PCBWay.com. This is a continuation from the previous video where I was looking at building an audio sweep generator. The whole idea, of course, came from some subscribers who said I should use one of these when I am working on amplifiers and mixers on repair work, and actually I don't have one. And having found that they're not something you can easily and cheaply find either, I decided I should build one. There are things like online generators that generate a sweep. So what a sweep is, is an audio signal sine wave stored at a low frequency and then going up to a high frequency and then repeating on a loop. The online generators and other people have said use your mobile phone. Yes, they can do this, but they can't generate a sync pulse. That's something to tell your oscilloscope where the sweep starts. Without that, you can't trigger on the start of the sweep, so you can't really use the generator in a useful way for repair work. Yes, you can hear the audio frequency changing from low to high, but really you need to look at this with your scope. You want to see whether the circuit is working at all frequencies, whether it is distorting at some frequencies, or whether the amplitude is changing. So, this is basically what we need is a sweep generator that generates that sound and generates the sync pulse. Having done a bit of research and obviously why reinvent the wheel, I looked at a few other options around and I did make a video, I'll link from this one, you can have a look to see how far we were getting with that, but the honest answer is not very far. But then, talking about reinventing the wheel, Detlef came along and basically reinvented it. And the idea was, rather than generating this variable frequency sine wave with a microcontroller or Arduino or something similar, and with a D2A converter, he said, why not use an MP3 player module? <laughs> now that might sound strange at first, but that's exactly what version 2 is doing. And you can see that on the schematic here. This is very simple then. So we have an Arduino Nano. That's a little module you can just solder to the PCB or fit into a socket even. We have the actual player itself. Okay. We have a rotary encoder. I'll come to that in a moment, explain what that's doing. And we have some connections. We have three LEDs. One shows us when power is applied. One shows us when the MP3 player module is running. And one shows us when the sync pulse is generated. We have outputs for the audio signal going out. We have the sync pulse going out. And really that's about it. Let's have a quick look at the prototype now, because at the end of the day, listening to what this does makes far more sense than me trying to explain what it does. Okay, so this is how far we got so far. Here we have the basic project built on breadboard. So this is the Arduino Nano. This is the little MP3 player with the SD card in. You'll notice at the moment we don't have the rotary encoder attached. It's here, the same with the display. We don't need these right now because the code is only partly written. So at the moment, the Nano is programmed to play the first file it finds on the card and then repeat on that one. And the first file on the card happens to be the sweep, which is the one we're interested in. So let's just connect this up and let's see how it sounds. Okay, it's just booting. There you see the busy LED come on. And there's a nice audio sweep. Now you'll notice the busy LED is staying on at the end of that, it's on repeat. But we can also generate the sync pulse every time we start the sample because the Nano is what's telling the MP3 player to play it again. Okay, so that's the basic sweep generator. You can hear it. It works very well. Sounds absolutely great. So now let's have a look more at the PCB layout. So what's the rotary encoder for? Well, the way this operates, we have a small SD card in the player. 
on here we can load various samples so we can have frequency sweeps between certain frequencies over certain periods of time we can have ones rising up in frequency or going down in frequency and we can also put on here continuous tones at various frequencies and sounds bass drums cymbals even music files so really we can put whatever we want onto the card you can find your own sound samples it's not difficult or you can use software to generate them but to make life easy i'm going to load a selection onto my google drive and link that to the project so you can go download the pre-made samples they have readable names so you'll find files saying sweep 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz or continuous one kilohertz bass drum snare drum whatever from the names of these various samples you can see what you're loading on the card use the ones that suit you but the operation is slightly different so the mp3 player effectively numbers the files from one to however many you have the more files you put on there the higher the number gets which means you can just add more samples as you wish when the arduino boots up the first thing it does is query the player and asks how many files do you have and if it replies 12 then it knows it has 12 files it doesn't know the name of the files but it can request to play whichever file you wish you do that simply by rotating the encoder and you'll see on the little display file one file two file three file whatever if you want to play one you push the button on the encoder it starts to play if you want to stop you push the button again it stops you can then select another file press the button again and play that one that means that if you add more files you just put them onto the sd card put it back into the player the next time you boot up the sweep generator it knows there's more files so there's no programming involved once it's ready to go it's ready to go another nice thing with this little mp3 player as it has a few different outputs so you can see here it has line out left and right we call them DAC R and DAC L this is your normal line out so this is a signal you would feed into a mixer or an amplifier but it also has speaker out one and two so built onto the little player is a three watt audio amplifier so you can actually use this for directly testing speakers if you so wish that's quite a nice feature we have it also has the busy line this is how the nano knows when it stops playing a file to generate a sync pulse when it tells it to play it again or to play another file and the memory cards can come in very large capacities well into the gigabytes so you can actually put some really long samples on here if you wish if you don't want the thing repeating every 10 seconds if you want to load a 10 or 20 or 30 minute tone you can do that another nice feature is it has built-in volume control so in the software this will be set so if you hold the button on the encoder in for several seconds the display will switch from file name to volume and you can change the amplitude as well so that's basically how this will work we actually had a play around with this on the live stream yesterday in fact so i'll also link that we tried loading an audio file where one channel was the inverse of the other so we had a one kilohertz sine wave and on the second channel it was the same one kilohertz inverted that worked great so if you want to play around with amplifiers in bridge mode you can do that you can feed an inverted signal into one so there's lots and lots of different ways you can use this i think it's going to be a really useful device we've seen the schematic then very very simple this so here is the pcb layout you can see it is quite compact we have the arduino nano here on this end of the nano will be a usb connector so you just connect your usb lead to that we can use this to power the whole device so this is also powering the little mp3 player as well you can see here another module we have four resistors three leds we can see here connected to the display the rotary encoder and as i explained we have terminal blocks to connect to the sync pulse the line out left and right the speaker out so you can connect here speak on connectors jack sockets 
you can have phono rca you can have bnc literally whatever you want so we designed this to be really very easily usable and configurable to the way you want it the same with the little sd card you can just push it it comes out stick that into an sd card reader and load whatever samples you want onto there and here is the 3d view so just components on one side it's a double-sided pcb some mounting holes so you can easily mount this into some sort of case you can attach the rotary encoder and display directly to the pcb or you can just use extension wires and mount them on the front panel the same with the output connections you can either put terminal blocks on here or you can run wires from here directly to your connectors if they're for example on the rear of the unit and that basically guys is it so we have an extremely flexible function generator in a way doing nothing that the online generators don't do but it's much more flexible you can put a much wider range of files on here and you have the all important sync pulse which you can a you'll see it flash the led and b you can connect it to your scope on the second channel okay so let's save the gerber file we'll upload this to pcbway.com we will go there right now we'll order the pcbs the prototype ones if everything's working good this will then be a shared project on pcbway you can come along order your pcbs and in the links there you will find the links to some sample files the source code everything you would want really to not only build this but modify it to your own requirements and here we are over at pcbway.com so let's order our pcbs although the site looks a little bit daunting at first if you're not used to pcb ordering it's actually very simple so from the home page pcb instant quote and quick order pcb all we need to do is add the gerber file which is generated from the pcb design software again these files will be available on the shared project you can download them you can do whatever this is completely open source modified in any way you wish but i'll open the file that we designed open And you can see the PCB here. Now this always shows in green with gold colored pads, but in actual fact, we can change the color of the PCB. I prefer red with white silk screen on. You can see the small PCBs. You get five of them for $5. This is a really good deal, guys. We can change the shipping. So I'll use the global direct shipping which is inexpensive, costs four euros 10. And you can see that the whole cost of these PCBs with shipping, which will vary to your location admittedly, but for me in Spain, $8.95. And that is a really good deal, guys. That is a really good deal. With that, you can build five of these. So not only one for yourself, but one for your friends as well. Okay, so I just need to complete the order now. It's in my cart. As soon as they arrive, we will put one of these together. If it's all working good, then this gets uploaded as a shared project. If you do similar things yourself, by the way, uploading your own project, once they are shared projects, if anybody orders your PCBs, you get yourself a nice 10% commission. Hopefully then, the sweep generator project is now basically completed. We think this version, Uncle Sweepy, as we called it, because we like to give things names, will work just fine and we'll find out as soon as the pcbs arrive okay hope you enjoyed watching that thank you very much once again to pcb way for sponsoring learning electronics repair and I look forward to seeing you all soon on another video ciao for now guys